Hello and welcome to Code with JV. Today I'm going to show you my three favorite ways of running open models and turning them into an API that I can call from my code. Mostly when I'm using open models, it's because I want to call them from code, because you can get free good web interfaces through ChatGPT and Claude, which are much better than a lot of the open models out there. So I really need to like fire up a local model because I want to type into a browser. But when I want to do like a task which I don't value enough to pay for API calls, or I want to do lots of it, an open model can be really useful. Let's have a look. First things first, I need some code. I've recently started running a new course. So I've got a whole bunch of students I'm working with. My jokes are out of touch. So I'm gonna get the AI to write me some jokes, which is a horrible use of AI, but let's try anyway. So here's a simple script. We're hitting open AI, asking them for a joke. Okay, there you go. Why <laughs> don't scientists trust Atom? Yep. Tell me a funny joke. Like I said, this is not the best use case. For AI. Ah. And <laughs> I don't even get it. Okay, we're hitting the API, we're getting some things. So I'll use this as the, the code that I'll run against the local APIs, which is what we really want to look at. My first and preferred way of hitting a local model is with Olama. It is just the easiest. It's got a limited number of models you can use. If you go to their GitHub, uh, you can see this is the models it's got, which is Llama ones, basically. If you just want something which will simulate an OpenAI API and you don't care too much about the quality of it, really useful. The thing I really like about Olama, so easy to install. Like it's just a grab this, install it, worked for me out of the box. If you're on Windows, go to their supported models, Olama, halfway down the page, down here, they have got a light LLM Docker image. Then typically what I would do I like to use Tmux just to split the windows. Olama serve will start an Olama server for you. This is where you can now go Olama run and type in the model you want to work with. Mistral. If you haven't got the model before, it's going to download it for you. If you've already got it, then it's just loading it up into VRAM in the graphics card. So it's like a four gig, I think it takes for this particular model. And now it's running. What's Mistral say for jokes? <laughs> it's the same thing. Everyone going for the Adam's joke. Okay, now it's just ignoring me. Chickens. Don't get it at all. Anyway, it's selling jokes, it's a model, it's running. But when you're running Olama, it is, doesn't have an OpenAI compatible API. It's got an API, like you can hit the API, but you have to write custom code for it, which is a pain. So the next thing I'd add to it is light LLM. You can install it with just pip install light LLM. Got a bunch of stuff going on in here. They're trying to abstract away all of your large language model calls, whether they're through APIs or local or lots of other things, putting convenience functions so you only learn one interface of the light LLM, which I don't use that much. If I'm calling an API, I'll usually call it with the library directly, and I don't want to have something else in the middle of it. But once it's installed, you can just light LLM model. Let's go Llama 2 this time. So what it's doing here is firing up Llama 2 and it's made a open AI compatible interface. It's running on port 8000. You'll start to see it's got completions, chat completions, V1, models, which is the open AI compatible API. We go back to the code. You can disable the API key. So localhost 8000 V1, it's hitting that. Oh, more atoms. Hey, it's, at least it's consistent, right? <laughs> Tell me a joke um, about people. Let's change the prompt. No, still hitting the atoms. Temperature two. Oh, tomato turned red. It was salad dressing. Yeah. Like I said, not great jokes, but this is my preferred just go to of like, I want a compatible API, which I can hit and just not worry too much about. I'll fire up Olama, fire up Light LLM, and off we go. But what if you want to get a bit more adventurous with your models? This is where text generation web UI is my main go to. And this is the most common one you'll see out there when you research how to run local models. It's big. It's got tons of features, tons of abilities. And that's kind of a pro and a con. You're going to have to spend more time learning how to do different pieces with it. I've just narrowed in on the bits that I care about and there's lots of it I don't pay attention to. But also it means you'll get stuff like, hey, look, you can get lava in there if you want some multimodal things and there'll be guides for it. It's got a huge amount of model backends that it uses. So you can think of this as a web interface to large language models that you're running. And these are all different strategies for turning model weights into an API that it can talk to. It's got like Llama CPP is really useful if you're on Apple Silicon, for example. There's all these different strategies emerging for running mold models. It's got a one-click installer. So if you don't want to get, well, actually, you should be getting into command line. So don't do that. Do it this way. Go down to the manual installation, which is you use Conda, you download it, you activate it, 
you install the things you need to. Big community, lots of support for all the operating systems out there. This is the way I would run different or more adventuresome models. If we jump over to here, I'm in a text gen, I've lighted up Condor, now we can run it. So when it's running, you'll see that it tell you what extensions it's loading up. So if you get like Lava 2 and going in here, uh, you can start to see them going. It gives you a whole chat interface, which I find is okay. But if you jump into model here, this is where you can see all the models you want. If you want to get a model, you just go here and put in like the Hugging Face URI. So this will get you this particular model from Hugging Face. And if you're looking for open models, well, if you jump over to the open LLM leaderboard, get rid of the big ones. Then you won't be able to run them on your machine. You might be able to run them on your local GPU cluster. Here, you can start to see different models. So it's basically, this is the bit you copy and paste it to get whichever one you want to play with. Here, they're the ones I've got. So I want, oh, let's get a, what was it? I was playing with coding assistants to see how good they were with Ada. Run it, it will usually choose the right model loader for you. Hit load, it'll show you its thinking. Graphics card will work. When it's ready, you can start to chat with it. But also, then you can hit the API. So what's this one? Code Cherry Pop. I wonder how good it will be at telling jokes. Don't do atoms. Oh, nice. Computer, yep, lose some bytes. Okay, sure. We're hitting the AI, it's awake. And the OpenAI compatible base is this URL. Okay, let's see if we get a robot joke. Yeah. Don't get it at all. But that is now hitting the text gen web UI. My second option, where I'll use it for getting access to different models. But also if you want to do fancy stuff like do image and text things in the same go, you can totally fire up the extension and do it through that, which is a, a real good use of this application. Both of them though, they require graphics cards on your machine. If you don't have access to it, here's something everyone can use. Google Colabs have a T4 that they'll give you on the free plan. They'll let you run it for a little bit before shutting it down and so on. This is the official text gen web UI Colab notebook. I modified it a bit for the OpenAI extensions. So this is a copy that I've made. I'll put the link down below if you want it. You go to file, save a copy and drive. It'll get you a copy of it you can do things with. And then if you go to edit notebook settings, um, make sure it's just got a T4 GPU on it and you're good to go. They've got this lovely hack here of just like, hey, let's just run a 24 hour music loop to stop Google shutting it down for you to keep it open for more of the time, which I never use this as a long running service. If you hit these ones here, this will start to run the code. So this is gonna start the long running audio thing going. The other thing here is it'll take about five minutes to run because it's gonna download and install all the things. I've put this extensions OpenAI one in here. So if you look at the code, which is running the notebook, then down here is the install the OpenAI requirements one. You'll see it's starting to fire up. It's doing all the installations and things. So I'll see you in five minutes. When it's all finished running, there'll be a bunch of links down the below. So it has a Gradio link, which will give you access to the web interface, but it's being powered by Google Colab. You don't have to load the other models, but you can talk to it. Oh, joke. Teaching programming. Hopeful. Okay, sure. That's one link. But the other link you want is the OpenAI compatible base, which is this one. So it's going through Cloudflare. Now I can jump back over to the code. Now my Python code is running against the Google Colab instance. Yeah, just sounds like a really old person. But that is my three strategies. Olama is my go-to for quick and easy. Text gen web UI is when I want to play with wider fancy models, particularly the multimodal text image ones coming out. And then Google Colab if I'm traveling or don't have access to a graphics card on my machine. Oh, one thing is this person here has got a whole bunch of notebooks that they have tested on the Google Colab hardware because it's limited graphics card. But here they've just looked at how performant they are and run a benchmark suite against it. I tried a little bit to get this one working. It wasn't going straight away. So I just used the text gen UI default one. It might take a bit of debugging to go, but this might give you some models you want to have a look at. Thanks for watching. I don't have a joke for you about liking and subscribing, but you can anyway. Take care.